All right. Now we're going to be doing all teachables, all the killer teachable perks. This is going to be a long one, so let's just hop right into it. I don't know if I have enough space on my phone for this, but... So first is going to be a nurse's calling. The auras of all survivors who are healing or being healed are revealed to you within when they're within a range of 28 meters, which is pretty good. You know, if you're having a problem with people running a lot of med kits or just healing a lot in general, like if if you're in a lobby and they got four med kits, this is probably a pretty good one to bring along, along with Franklin's demise actually. But just this one by itself, I would say. Being able to see people healing is pretty good. I'm gonna throw it up here at. Uh, I'll 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 leave it at B. We might do some readjusting at the end, but nope. Next is uh, tra uh teachable from the trapper. Um, agitation. You get excited in anticipation of hooking your prey while carrying a survivor. You benefit from the following effects: increases your movement speed by 18%. That's pretty solid. Increases your terror radius by 12 meters. So you could run this with a perk like Starstruck. That would be an awesome combination. You could also run those two with Distressing, even though I really wouldn't because Distressing increases your terror radius as well. But that would ensure that you get a lot more people in your uh, terror radius. But 18% faster is pretty huge. You can carry them to white hooks. You can carry them to basement hooks and stuff like that. Um, let's see. A normal killer is 115 for the movement speed. 115 times 0 0.018 is 20. So you go from 115 to being, oh, it was 20.7, but you go from being 115 to being 135. So that's pretty huge. That's a, oh, wait, 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 wait. That, my bad. Yeah, I forgot you slow down when you pick someone up. Hold on, let me look. The standard movement speed for all killers while carrying someone is 92% of survivor speed. Even the slow killers move 92%. Okay, okay, so Huntress and Trickster move at the same speed as normal movement speed killers when carrying people. This math is too much for me. Damn, we're already in three minutes in. All right, so 18% faster, and you move at 92%, so 92 times 0.18. So you get an extra 16.5, so 92, 92 plus 16.5. Okay, so that makes you slightly faster than the survivor. Um, nothing crazy, a little bit slower than your normal movement speed. But yeah, I think it's a decent perk. It's kind of, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of niche. But if you're a big uh, if you're a big um, Scourge Hook user, then it could have a lot of value for you. I would put it at the same. Now I, I put it at C, actually. Next up is the Teachable Mastermind perk. Is that even on this list? Awakened Awareness? Yeah, it's not even on this uh, tier list. They haven't updated it. But let's just go through it. Uh, while carrying survivors, the auras of all of the survivors are real, revealed to you when they're within 20 meters of your location. So that could be a real great pair with Starstruck. Not crazy. I think I might look might like uh, Scorch Hook Floods of Rage better um, because you can see their auras for seven seconds after hooking somebody, and then you run that with Agitation. So Starstruck, Agitation, and Floods of Rage would be a pretty good combo. Um, I would put it. Still, I'd put it at uh, I put it at C. Up next is the teachable perk bamboozle for the clown. Performing vault action is 15% faster and calls upon the entity to block that window for survivors for 16 seconds. So this is basically bamboozle is completely better than uh, hex crowd control in my opinion. Um, it, bamboozle obviously doesn't affect pallets, but yeah. I mean, that's a decent one. 15% faster is all right. I would put it... Wait. It's this one. I gotta find it. Bamboozle? I'd put it... I, eh. There's too many... There's holes in the floor. There's pallets. There's second story windows. There's... Yeah, it's just not that great in my opinion. Um, up next is a teachable cannibal perk. Barbecue and chili. A deep bond with the entity unlocks potential in one's aura reading ability. After hooking a survivor, all survivors who are at least 40 meters away, 40 meters is huge from that hook, revealed to you for four seconds. 
So if they're 40 or further away, you can see them. But if they're within 40, which chances are pretty good, one at least is within 40, waiting for you to leave so they can get the unhook. You can see them for four seconds. I it's it's all right. I'm not a big fan of it because 40 is huge. Maybe if they should have done like, I don't know, 30 at least. I would say where's it at here? Barbecue and chili. I'd put it at D tier. I'm not a big fan in all honesty. Beast of Prey, a teachable huntress perk. Your lust for the kill is so intense, the connection with the entity is momentarily lost, making you unpredictable. You gain, upon gaining bloodlust, Beast of Prey activates. Grants undetectable status effect for as long as bloodlust is active. So, I mean, that's pretty decent. I mean, it's, it's not great. Undetectable, you have no terror, it suppresses your terror radius. Dang, get out of here. All these ads, get out of my face. <laughs> Undetectable suppresses your terror radius, suppresses the red stain, blocks your aura from being revealed to survivors, suppresses the jump scare sound cue when starting to move from standing still, enables the smoky screen visual effect indicating stealth to the killer. So the black smoke around the your visuals like when Ghostface goes, uh, ghost. Going ghost. But I mean, it's it also gives you 50% bonus blood points for the hunter category. I mean, if you're having a lot of trouble getting looped pretty hard, I mean, it could be cool. It's not great, though, because they can still see you. Like, I guess getting rid of the red stain is pretty pog, but other than that, it's it's not great. I would just try to get good enough at looping so that way you're not even in that situation. I put an E. I don't think it's, I don't think it's awful. The 50% bonus blood points is cool. Blood Echo. This is a teachable Oni perk. When hooking a survivor, all other injured survivors suffer from the hemorrhage and exhausted status effects for 45 seconds. It can only be triggered once every 60 seconds. That's a kind of a big cooldown, but 45 seconds of exhausted and hemorrhage is pretty good. I mean, you have to have other people injured at the same time. I feel like this would be really good with Legion, since you can keep people injured easily and injure them very quick. Um, now that Dead Hard's not really a thing, it's I I think there's a lot less value in this. Sprint burst is not that too crazy to keep up with. I I put it down at in sixty second time, yeah, that's it's a little bit too much. Blood echo. Yeah, I'll put it right there. Up next is Blood Warden, a teachable um nightmare perk. Freddy Krueger. As soon as one gate is open, Blood Warden activates. The auras of survivors standing within the exit gate area are revealed to you. Once per trial, hooking a survivor while Blood Warden is active calls upon the entity to block the exits for 60 seconds. It's really good and really bad at the same time because it depends on what kind of survivors you're playing with. If they pop one gate and you know, you down someone. I've been in a, a decent amount of matches where they immediately just run out the gate and leave behind and don't care about saving teammates at all. But this would be really good for... Um, if you were to... An absolutely devastating combination would be Hex Noed, No Way Out, and Blood Warden. <laughs> that would be a, an absolute insane in-game combo. Um... You'd get so much hate for using that build, though. I might have to try it. <laughs> but, yeah, it's pretty good. And you get to see the aura of them um, for the whole 60 seconds if they're standing there. So if they're just chilling, waiting there, you'll be able to see them, which is pretty nice. I'm going to go ahead and throw it up at... I'll throw it up at B. That's, that's pretty decent. <laughs> up next is a teachable Bloodhound perk. Or, Bloodhound perk. Up next is a teachable Wraith perk, uh, Bloodhound Pools of blood are shown in bright red and can be tracked for four seconds longer than normal. I'm going to go ahead and throw this down here. Um, I think it's pretty much worthless in my opinion. Uh, pools of blood. I mean, really good people track those. I usually don't track those. I just follow the scratch marks. Pretty much nobody runs scratch mark perks because there's a lot better perks. Like off the record in adrenaline and stuff like that. But... Maybe with low profile being a thing, this will be a better option, but I don't know. 
Up next is a t another teachable trapper perk, Brutal Strength. Your great strength allows you to shred through your prey's defenses, increases the action speed of breaking pallets and breakable walls, and damaging generators by 20%. I This is a very, like, just standard, boring perk. Um, I'd put it right down there. It's Is it... The pallet speed one is what saves it from being F. Yeah, I'll keep it down there. Um... 20% faster pallet speed, that's pretty That's pretty decent, but, I mean, a lot of killer's add-ons help with that, like, um, Legion has a mixtape where dim or breaking pallets, walls, and generators is, like, 25% faster, so, I mean, you could combine these two for, like, 45% uh, faster, which would be pretty nutty, but it's just a very basic perk I'm not a big fan of. Up next is a teachable Onrio perk. Uh, the Grudge, Call of Brine. Um, your your psychic abilities influence technology in devastating ways. After damaging a generator, Call of Brine activates for 60 seconds. The generator regresses at 150, or the generator regresses at 200% of the normal regression speed, and its aura is revealed to you. Each time a survivor completes a good skill check on a generator affected by Call of Brine, you receive a loud noise notification. That one right there. Oh, is it not on here? Are you serious? Hold on, hold on. Yeah, we'll just we'll just stick to this one. Okay. I what I don't even is Nemesis's perks on here? No, this doesn't even have Nemesis's perks. Alright, well, some are gonna be missing, but maybe I'll like Photoshop it in. Um Call of Brine, I'd put at S tier. It's a really strong perk. Um you get information out of it and two hundred percent regression. So, I think that's really cool. Um, definitely an awesome perk. I would get it. I would use it a lot if I had her unlocked, but I don't. So, Corrupt Intervention. This got nerfed. It's a Teachable the Plague perk. At the start of the trial, three generators located furthest from you blocked for 120 seconds. Corrupt Intervention now. This never used to be the case. Deactivates prematurely once the first survivor is put into the dying state. Um, this used to be an S tier perk. It was a must run in my opinion if you're at high ranks because blocking three generators was huge. It also gave you an idea of where survivors were spawning at. But now, I put it at A. Because it can be huge, it can be clutch, but sometimes you get a down in the first five seconds and then that perk's useless the rest of the game. So, I haven't been using it nearly as much. Gullerophobia, a teachable the clown perk. For all survivors within your terror radius, the following effects apply. Reduces healing speed by 50%, increases the rotation speed of healing skill checks by 50%. This right here, rotation speed of healing skill checks by 50%, that should be on uh, Hex Lullaby. Uh, absolutely. You would definitely have to use this with perks that increase your terror radius, like maybe... I don't know, monitor and abuse, if you're not in chase, it shrinks it, so maybe like distressing and agitation, maybe that could be a good combination, but I'm going to put it down here in the D tier. Um, next up is uh, the Coup de Gras, teachable perk for the twins. Each time a generator is completed, Coup de Gras gain, grows in power and gains one token. Consume one token to increase the distance of your next lunch by 80%. That's huge. It can get you some clutch plays and secure a lot of hits and maybe a lot of downs. I won't say a lot because each time a generator is completed, that holds it back because that means you can only have five tokens. That means you could get five hits. That means if you spread it out among everybody, you could get four injures and one down, and that's it. So... Eh, it's all right. It'd probably be crazy on Michael Myers, not going to lie. That'd probably be nutty, but we're going to go ahead and throw it down here. Um, I just think there's a lot other better perks. Up next is um, oh, Clusterphobia. Oh, that's a perk for everybody. Up next is Dark Devotion, a Teachable of the Plague perk. Your terror radius transfers to the Obsession for 30 seconds, and... Its radius is set to 32 meters. Grants the undetectable status effect for the same duration. I mean, that's that's pretty huge. Oh, wait. I missed the first part. You become obsessed with one survivor. When the obsession loses a health state by any means and thus enters the injured state, 
Dark Devotion activates. Your terror radius transfers to the obsession for 30 seconds, and it is, its radius is set to 32 meters. Grants undetectable for the same, or grants the undetectable status effect for the same duration. So that could be pretty good. Um, I'm gonna go to, and throw it at C. <laughs> eh. Yeah, I think you can make some pretty crazy plays with that. Um, that would help out a lot. That'd be a really good one to pair with Starstruck and stuff like that. and Or just a killer you need more time with to secure things and get to places quicker. Up next is Darkness Revealed for the Dredge. When you search a locker, the aura of all survivors within 8 meters of any locker to you any locker are revealed to you for five seconds darkness revealed has a cooldown for 30 seconds i mean that that's pretty decent it's not crazy does this not have darkness revealed either oh my goodness oh my goodness well, i guess we're not ranking that one i'd put it at like a, a b and probably a c probably a d all right dead man switch uh, Deathslinger's perk. After hooking a survivor, Dead Man Switch activates for the next 30 seconds. While activated, any survivor that stops repairing a generator before it's fully repaired causes the entity to block the generator until Dead Man Switch, until Dead Man Switch, Dead Man Switch ends. Affected generators are highlighted by the white aura. Anyways, I mean, yeah, that's a pretty solid perk. Um, you hook a survivor for the next 30 seconds, uh, generators blocked, and... Any survivor repairing that generator. Oh, okay, so, I mean, eh, it's alright. You hook a survivor and then 30 seconds if they hop off a generator by any means it blocks it, which could be cool. Like, I mean, it's not it's not awesome, but I'm, it's decent at least. I'd put it at D. Uh, it does give you some information, though, so maybe put it at C. Deadlock. Whenever a generator is completed, the entity blocks the generator with the next or with the most progression for 30 seconds. The aura of the black generator is revealed to you in white during this time. I think that one's a really good one. All right, I would put this at uh, A tier. So deadlock for the Cenobite, a teachable Cenobite perk is A tier. Deathbound. Okay, we got deathbound. Uh, teachable Executioner perk, when a survivor heals another survivor for the equivalent of one health state at least 32 meters away from you, the survivor will scream, revealing their location and activating Deathbound. For the next 60 seconds, the survivor exposed, uh, the survivor suffers from the Oblivious status effect when further than 8 meters away from the healed survivor. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that one down here. That's a pretty awful perk in my opinion. Um, I don't... Yeah, that's all I got to say about that one. That, that's a terrible perk. Um, oh, Discordance. Discordance is a, a really good one. So any generator within 128 meter range, that's the whole map. That's every single map, the whole map. Um, I don't think there's a single map bigger than 128 that I know of. When the generator is first highlighted, Discordance triggers a loud noise notification on the generator. After the generator is no longer within range, no longer within range, or is being repaired by just one survivor, the highlighted aura will linger for another four seconds. So we'll go ahead and throw that one at Did we do S tier? Yeah, that's a really good one. We'll throw it up there for now. We can always change it later. Another dredge perk, which we don't have. Yep. Dissolution. Everything turns to dust. Um, three seconds after entering a survivor, by any means, dissolution activates for the next 20 seconds. While dissolution is active, if a survivor fast vaults over a pallet, while they're within your terror radius, the entity will break the pallet at the end of the vault. That's a pretty good one. Deactivating dissolution. <laughs> I'd put that at B. That's pretty solid. Uh, distressing. Yeah, every killer has that. Dragon's Grip. Dragon's Grip is on here. After kicking a generator for the next 30 seconds, the first survivor interacting with it will scream, revealing their location for 4 seconds and suffer from the stu and suffer from the exposed status effect for 60 seconds. Dragon's Grip has a cooldown of 80 seconds. 30 seconds isn't a lot of time for somebody to come touch it. If you were to bump that up to a minute, 
for the next minute the first survivor interacting with it will scream and be exposed, you'd be doing a lot better. And an 80 second cooldown. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this at E. Good in concept, but kind of crippled. Dying Light. A teachable The Shape perk. For as long as the obsession is alive, all other survivors suffer from a stackable 3% penalty to repairing, healing, and sabotaging speeds per token, up to a maximum of 33% for 11 tokens. The obsession is unaffected by this penalty and instead granted a permanent 33% action speed bonus for hooking, unhooking, and healing. Oh, but no, hell, who cares about that? 33%, so they heal a 30 second heal would be like 20 seconds and a three second unhook would be like two seconds i didn't even know that wait 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 11 each wait 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 each time you hook a survivor other than the obsession for a total of 11 tokens you can only get 10 tokens because it says each time you hook a survivor other than your obsession, you gain one token. There's four people. One's the obsession. One, two, three hooks, dead. One, two, three hooks, dead. One, two, three hooks, dead. Wait, that's nine. So you can only get nine tokens. And even then, you're only going to be using four, six, really. Six tokens would... I'd be the most effective because it I mean it I guess if you got two people to totally dead and then that person hooked twice that but the time you have two people left it's pretty much over at that point I mean yeah that's pre I think that's pretty good um kind of sucks that they get the 33 percent straight out the gate but you know it is what it is I'd put it at I put it at C yeah enduring a teachable hillbilly perk reduces pallet stun duration by 50%. Enduring has no effect while carrying a survivor. So, I mean, that's that's not bad. I would just say don't get hit by the pallet. So, I'm going to go ahead and put that all the way at the F tier. Because it, I mean, sometimes you get hit. But if you're getting hit by pallets so much that you need that perk, you should probably work on faking out the pallet and making them drop it. Eruption, we don't have any Nemesis perks, so... Eruption, though, I, let's just go through it. After kicking a generator, the aura is highlighted in yellow. When putting a survivor into the dying state by any means, every affected generator explodes and starts regressing. Applies an immediate 10% regression penalty. That's pretty decent. Any survivor repairing a generator when it explodes will scream and suffer from the incapacitated status effect for 25 seconds. Your reference has a cooldown of 30 seconds. Yeah, that's a really, really, really solid perk, and I would put it at A tier. Fearmonger. <laughs> your distressing presence drains and weakens your prey. Whenever a survivor is repairing your generator, they suffer from the blindness and exhausted status effects. If the survivor is already exhausted, their status effect timer will be paused. The status effect lingers for 5 seconds after the survivor stops repairing. Not a huge fan of this perk. Oh, wait, that's not even a teachable perk. That's just uh, a standard perk. Oh, that's a pyramid head perk. What one's that? Forced penance. Oh, fired up's next. Okay, fired up. So, gain a stackable. Oh, fired up is a teachable the nightmare perk. Gain a stackable 4% action speed bonus to picking up and dropping survivors, breaking pallets, unbreakable walls, damaging generators, and vaulting windows up to a maximum of 20%. So, you can pick up survivors 20% faster break pal this is just a much 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 better version of um what was the one brutal strength wait where's brutal strength at 20 percent faster breaking pallets walls and generators and then fire up is an extra 20 percent in picking up and dropping survivors breaking pallets and breakable walls Damaging generators and vaulting windows. Yeah. I'm gonna wait, where's brutal strength at? We'll just go ahead and put that in F tier. And then we'll put fire up in We'll put it at Do I do D? 
Yeah, I'll put it at D tier. It's not crazy, but it's definitely a way better version than um, Brutal Strength. Wow, Brutal Strength is useless. Um, forced Penance. Those who stand in the way will suffer harsh judgment. Survivors who take a protection hit suffer from broken for the next 80 seconds. That's not bad. They can't heal for 80 seconds? That could be huge. I'll put that at B. Um, your vicious basic attacks. Oh, another teachable cannibal, cannibal perk. Oh, yeah, Franklin's demise. Um, if not recovered within 90 seconds, depletes all the charges. Um, the auras of lost items remain visible to you for 32 meters and slowly fade from white to red as the timer elapses, indicating, uh, you know, running out of charges. Um, Franklin's demise, that can be huge. Um, I'll throw that up at B tier as well. That's a pretty good one. Uh, furtive chase. You become obsessed with one survivor each time your obsession, you hook your obsession, you gain one token up to a maximum of four tokens. While in chase, your terror radius is reduced by four meters per accumulated token. When a survivor rescues the obsession, that survivor will become the new obsession. So you could have 16 meters taken off your terror radius. I mean, that's not that great. I'm going to put that at. You have gotten air for well-oiled gears. After a survivor loses a health state, gearhead activates. While gearhead is active, a survivor succeeding a... Oh, this is a teachable death slinger perk. Um, while gearhead is active, a survivor succeeding a great skill check while repairing reveals the aura to you. Reveals their aura to you for 10 seconds, after which gearhead activates. A great skill check? We're going to go ahead and throw that right down here at Efferuni. Um... Let me go grab something real quick. Yeah. You move this down to good skill check. Would probably be pretty OP, but still. Great skill check. Ah, makes it useless. Grim Embrace, a teachable artist perk. Each time a survivor is hooked for the first time, Grim Embrace gains a token. Upon reaching four tokens, Grim Embrace activates. The entity blocks all generators for the next 40 seconds. Which is huge. The aura of the obsession is revealed to you for five seconds. Are you kidding me? There's no artist perks. Well, I'd put that as A tier. Hangman's Trick, a teachable pig perk. Gain a loud noise notification whenever a survivor begins sabotaging a hook. While carrying a survivor, see the aura of any survivor within six meters of any hook. Yeah, that's worthless. Go ahead and throw that down there. Hex Blood Favor. Oh, now we're getting to the hexes. Hex Blood Favor. We just did that tier list, didn't we? In relation to all other perks, though. Blocks the palette for 15 seconds. Just, it's decent. It's all right. We'll put it at C. Crowd Control. Oh, that was a Hex Blood Favor is a teachable blight perk. Hex Crowd Control, a teachable trickster perk. Um, blocking the window for 20 seconds when they vault through it. Bamboozle's way better. We'll just go ahead and throw. All right, Hex Crowd Control will throw at F because Bamboozle's just better. Um, Hex Devour Hope. Do we have that? We got Devour Hope. All right. I, yeah, I don't even need to talk about this. It's a teachable hag perk. Um, Hex, it's at S tier. Uh, hex Haunted Ground. We're going to go through all these Hex Perks. Just to save on time, we're going to go through all these Hex Perks without explaining them because I did a whole separate Hex Perks tier list video. Uh, hex Haunted Ground. That's another really solid one. That's a Teachable Spirit Perk. We're going to go ahead and throw that one up at B. Hex Huntress Lullaby. That's a Teachable Huntress uh, Perk. We're going to go ahead and throw that at F. Hex No One Escapes Death. Which this does not have why does this not have I'm, I'm confused at who made this i'm gonna have to do something um no one escapes death s tier perk oh that's not even a teachable oh this is a teachable list too and it it it's it's got claustrophobia is not a teachable perk 
Okay, whatever. I'm confused. What is this? Hex Pentimento? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, yeah. So that's why no one escapes death. I'm doing teachables, duh. Look at me, I'm, I'm stupid. I'm stupid. Um, Hex Pentimento is a teachable artist perk. Hex Ruin, that's a hag perk. I'll put that at A. It's not as great as it used to be. Um, where are we at here? Pentimento isn't here for some reason. Um, Hex Play thing. One of these lists are wrong. Nope, it's, this one's the right one. Hex play things, the Cenobite one. What's this one? Hex the third seal. Hex the third seal, yeah. We're gonna go ahead and throw that at F. I don't even know what that one is. Oh, Retribution. Um, all survivors are revealed for 15 seconds after cleansing a totem. That's pretty decent. We'll throw that at B as well. Hex Undying, that could be clutch, throw that at A. Um, that is Undying, isn't it? Yep. Um, what is this one? Hoarder, uh, Teachable Twins perk. You protect what little you have. Oh, Hoarder triggers a loud noise notification for four seconds. Whenever a survivor performs any of the following actions within 64 meters of you, unlocks a chest, picks up any item, including limited items. Hoarder spawns two additional chests on the trial. Um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and throw that at that. Uh, that could be good in very niche situations like Pinhead because, uh, or the Grudge because the Lament configuration you gotta pick up and then the, uh, tapes you gotta pick up. <laughs> but other than that, it's garbage. Uh, Hysteria, not here because it's the Nemesis. For some reason, he's not on here. Um, Whenever you put a survivor into the injured state, all injured survivors suffer from oblivious for 30 seconds. Hysteria has a cooldown for 30 seconds. That's not that great. I'd throw that at like E. I'm all ears. Any survivor performing a rushed action within 48 meters of your location has their aura revealed to you for 6 seconds. I'm all ears can be triggered every 40 seconds. So, vaulting a pallet, vaulting a window, flying out of a locker, stuff like that. Their aura will be revealed for six seconds, which is pretty solid. But 48 meters is pretty huge, so. I'm um, all ears, I'd put it A. Infectious Fright, a teachable to plague perk. Whenever a survivor is put into the dying state by any means, all of the survivors within your terror radius scream and reveal their current location for six seconds. I mean, that's pretty decent. So we'll go ahead and put that at um, B. Uh, a terror radius 32 meters, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good um, for finding people who are hiding and stuff like that. Waiting for you to, like if you have a big problem with people using flashlight saves and pallet saves and stuff like that, you can down the person, do a quick 360, see that no one's there, and then go for a grab if you want. Iron Maiden, you open lockers 50% faster. Survivors who exit lockers will scream and suffer from the exposed status effect. For 30 seconds and their reveal and their location is revealed to you for four seconds so i mean that's pretty decent that's probably pretty good perks for like huntress and trickster for reloading faster um since you open the lockers faster i would assume you reload faster um exposed for 30 seconds how people don't often get in lockers though i feel like like, sometimes if you got, like, built to last and inner healing and stuff like that. But other than that, it's kind of eh. We'll put it at E, though. E. <coughs> oh, boy. All right. Knockout. Putting a survivor into the dying state with your basic attack blocks their aura from being revealed to survivors who is further than 16 meters away from them. For the next 16 seconds, the following effects apply to the dying survivor. If they suffer from the blindness status effect, reduces their field of view and causes them to be deafened, reduces the crawling speed by 50%, reduces the recovery speed by 25%. This is definitely a um, sluggers like perk. Um, but we're going to go ahead and put it at... Crawling, slower, not really a factor, I don't think. Blindness... For somebody who's down, not really a factor. Reduces field of view for someone who's down, not really a factor. Reduces recovery speed, that's pretty decent, but 
We're gonna go ahead and throw it at F. Lethal Pursuer. At the start of the trial, okay, nine seconds of being able to see everybody at the start of the trial. Extends the duration of survivor's auras being revealed to you by two seconds. So, oh, Lethal Pursuer benefits from its own effect. Oh, that's cool. Huh, so that means 11 seconds at the start of the match. But anyways, a Teachable Nemesis perk is pretty solid. Um, it all, it increases the, so like you have Scourge Hook Floods of Rage where you get to see people's auras for seven seconds. This bumps it up to nine. So that's pretty solid. I'm glad they decided to, and of course it's not on the list. I would put it at a, at a A tier. Um, I'm glad they decided to rework it like that because I hate perks that once, like after the first minute, they're completely unusable and they're worthless. So that would be A tier. Um, a Lightborn, a Teachable Hillbilly perk. Um, the auras of survivors attempting to blind you with a flashlight are revealed to you for 10 seconds. Lightborn grants immunity to being blinded by the flashlight. Firecrackers, flashbangs, or blast mines. So that's pretty decent, but I mean, I would just avoid... I would just avoid being hit by those things. It's it's not really that hard. It can be, but it's not too crazy. Mad Grit. While caring from a survivor, you suffer no cooldown from missed attacks. Successfully hitting a survivor will pause the carried survivor's wiggling progression for four seconds. That's a teachable Legion perk. Mad Grit. I'm going to go ahead and throw it at. Okay, that's not what I meant to do. Well, I guess that's going there. <laughs> Yeah, we'll go ahead and throw it at F. It's kind of that's kind of awful. Make your choice a teachable the pig perk. The rescuer screams. Oh wait, each time a survivor is rescued from the hook when you're at least 32 meters away, make your choice activates. The rescuer screams and suffers from the exposed status effect for the next 60 seconds. Make your choice has a cooldown of 60 seconds. So I mean that's pretty solid. 32 meters though, that's your whole terror radius. You move at what, 4.5 meters per second? So let's do some quick math real quick. Pull out the calci. 4.5 times 5, 22, 4.5 times 7. So it'll take you 7 seconds to get back to the hook. They've had 7 seconds to run. So you're probably working with 30 seconds of total exposed time to actually act on. And I do like it's a perk that forces you to leave the hook. I mean, we're going to have um, reassurance coming out, and that's really going to force you to leave. But I like this perk. And, of course, it's not on here. Um, I would put it at a B tier. Monitor and abuse. Oh, wait, no. Oh, wait, yeah, there it is. Make your choice. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll put it at B. Um, monitor and abuse. A teachable doctor perk. You're meticulous in your approach, terrifying in your application. Your base terror radius is increased by 8 meters. Whenever you're outside of a chase, your terror radius is reduced by 16 meters, while your field of view is increased 10 degrees. I mean, that's that's pretty solid. It's not crazy. I put it at like C. Probably really good for no, I'll put it at D. Probably really good for the doctor, but other than that, it's it's not really that great in my opinion. Nemesis, a teachable Oni perk. Any survivor who blinds you or stuns you becomes the obsession. Anytime your obsession switches to another survivor by any means, that survivor is affected with the oblivious status effects for the next sixty seconds, and their aura is revealed to you for four seconds. So this is a perk that would work really good with other obsession-based perks, so you can have more than one obsession. You know what? I just realized Dying Light could be paired with Nemesis to get you those 11 tokens. But I think that's doing too much at that point. Doing the most. Oblivious. Eh. Aura revealed. You don't need to have your aura... You don't, you've don't. seen them stun you. You don't need their aura, really. It's kind of useless. We'll go ahead and put it at F. What is this one? 
Uh, no way out's a teachable trickster perk and not on here, obviously. Um, I will, it's pretty simple. When a survivor, or wait, for each time you hook a survivor, no way out gains one token. Once the exit gates have been powered, no way out activates. When a survivor interacts with an exit gate switch, you receive a loud noise notification, and the entity blocks both exit gate switches for 12 seconds. An additional 12 seconds per token in your possession, combined with a mac to a maximum of 60 seconds. So, no way out's clearly an S tier perk, along with no ed, early clutch end game perks. Um, I don't know why it's not in here. Yeah, I don't know. Um, oppression? Is oppression in here? Yeah. Um, when damaging a... Oh, oppression's a teachable twins perk. No way out's a teachable trickster perk. But oppression, when damaging a generator, up to three random generators also begin regressing. Trigger a difficult skill check if a selected generator is being repaired. A cooldown of 80 seconds. What could that even go with? I mean... It's not bad, I guess. If you had like Pop Goes the Weasel and you're kicking gins often, maybe you. Are there per other perks that make other generators regress faster? I don't think so. I'm gonna put it at like. Let's see, it's kind of just a side, like a side perk. 80 second cooldown sucks, uh, cause your pop is 45. Overcharge, oh, overcharge is a teachable doctor perk. Overcharge a generator by performing damage on the generator. By performing the damage generator on it? Uh oh. The next survivor interacting with it is faced with a difficult skill check. Failing the skill check results in immediate progression of loss of 5% plus the base 10%, so that's 15. Succeeding the skill check grants no bonus progression but prevents the generator from exploding. After overcharge is applied to a generator, the following effect applies. Increases the regression speed from 75 to 200 percent over the next 30 seconds. That's really solid. That's a really solid perk. Um, I'll go ahead and put it at S. I think that's a really good perk. Uh, better than ruin because it's not hex. It can't get cleansed, and it's 200 percent instead of 100 um, percent. Overwhelming presence, another teachable doctor perk. Just knowing your oh survivors within your terror radius suffer from inefficiency. When using an item, the depletion rate is increased by a hundred percent. Eh, we'll go ahead and throw that one at E. That's pretty bad. I mean, if I've played against people who use overwhelming presence, and if I'm using a toolbox and I see overwhelming presence pop up, I'll just stand up and then. You stop using the toolbox and just start repairing again. So it's pretty much a non-factor, I would say. Um, maybe it's good for flashlights. But I don't know. Med kits too, maybe. But you'd have to have a pretty large terror radius. Like you'd have to try and max out your terror radius, basically. Play with your food. A teachable The Shape perk. Your, um, each time you chase your obsession and let them escape, play with your food receives one token, up to a maximum of three tokens. Each token applies a stack, a stackable 5% haste status effect to a maximum of 15%. Performing basic attacks or special attacks that damage survivors consumes one token. So that's not bad. That's not bad. Play with your food has a cooldown of 10 seconds on token accumulation. You can only be obsessed with one survivor at a time. See, so you could theoretically use this with, like, Furtive Chase, and that would be probably a lot easier. Furtive Chase or maybe um, Nemesis, but, eh, I think it's it's pretty decent. So you could be 15% faster, so pull out the calculator, 115 movement speed times 0 0.15 is 23, so you'd be 137 movement speed so you'd be fast af uh and you know yeah i think that's pretty solid overall that's pretty solid i'd put that at dude that play with your food would be crazy on um legion you'd be booking it um we'll put that at b yeah that's pretty solid and you only consume one token when you swing so that's pretty solid uh, Pop Goes the Weasel, 
Okay, we'll just go ahead and throw this one at S. A teachable clown perk. Uh, immediately reduces 20% of the generator's regression, which is huge. If you have a generator that's 99 and you hit it, it immediately goes back to like, what, 75? So that's really solid. Regular re generator regression applies afterwards and pop goes the weasel deactivates. So you combine that with um, uh, the twin perk, oppression, looking pretty solid. Um, Predator, a teachable the Wraith perk. The scratch marks left behind by survivors spawn slightly, oh, considerably closer together. Yeah, we'll, we'll just go ahead and throw that one down here. Uh, I think this is a terrible perk in every way. It probably deserves its own category for how bad it is because there's a lot of times where you're across the map and you can see the scratch marks that are up on a tree, like 12 feet high on the tree for some reason. Why Senator Armstrong in the bottom of the corner on this thing? All right, anyways. Um, but yeah, and then you, so you take away that ability. Uh, I, I guess you can track them better, but yeah, that's worthless. <laughs> Rancor, a teachable spirit perk. Also, uh, your aura, each time a generator is completed, your aura is revealed to the obsession for three seconds. All survivors' locations are revealed to you for three seconds. Once all generators are completed, the obsession suffers from a permanent exposed status effect. You are granted the ability to kill the obsession by your own hand. You can only be obsessed with one survivor at a time. So, possibly, you could have Nemesis with this. And you could kill the person, and then you could be chasing somebody, and you could let them pallet stun you, and then you could kill them. But... What is this? It's once all generators are completed. So yeah, and then you combine this. Wow, combine Rancor with No Way Out. Yeah, that could be good. Or you could just do, but it does allow you to kill them though. So there's that. I'll put that up here at A. That's pretty solid. Um, remember me, a teachable nightmare perk. Each time the obsession loses a hell state, remember me gains one token. Increases the opening time of both exit gates by four seconds, up to a maximum of 16 additional seconds. The obsession remains unaffected from this penalty. 16 extra seconds, so you go from 14 seconds to six, so 30 seconds to open a gate. Use no way out. That's a minute. A minute 30 to open the gate. And then blood warden. Eh, it's all right. We'll go ahead and put it at like C. <coughs> it's nothing crazy. Save the best for last. A uh, teachable the shape perk. Each time you hit a survivor other than your obsession with a basic attack, save the best for last gains one token up to a maximum of eight tokens. Gain a stackable 5% cooldown reduction on successful attacks per token up to a maximum of 40%. So this is a... 40% cooldown for the attack, a successful attack animation. So Michael Myers looking at his knife will be 40% faster at 8 tokens. Each time you hit your obsession with a basic attack, so say save the best for last, loses 2 tokens. When the obsession is sacrificed or killed, you can neither gain nor lose any more tokens. So theoretically you could... Wait, wait, wait. I guess the only way to lose tokens is hitting your obsession. I was going to say you could tunnel your obsession and get them on their last hook and then go get... And then once they're saved, you know, go farm up tokens and then kill them off. But it doesn't really matter. That's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. I'd put that at a, a solid B. Um... Up next is a teachable Onrio perk. Oh, Scorch Hook Floods of Rage, but it's not on here, of course. Um, did I do call it? Yeah, I already did call it, Brian. Um, you form a psychic connection with the entity and, after, and alter the rules of the trial. After At the start of the trial, four random hooks are changed into Scorch Hooks. The auras of Scorch Hooks are revealed to you in white. Each time a survivor is unhooked from a Scorch Hook, so when they're unhooked, the following effects apply. The auras of all survivors are revealed for seven seconds. There's no, there's no, that's it. 
So all across the map, this is huge. I like this. You run this with agitation to get them to the hooks. So agitation, floods of rage, and what other two other perks you want to do? Maybe lethal pursuer. So now you got nine seconds. Yeah, this that's easy S tier for floods of rage. Easy S tier. Um, scourge hook gift of pain. That's not on here either. A teachable Cenobite perk. Um, each time a survivor is unhooked from a Scourge Hook, the following effects apply. The survivor suffer from hemorrhage and mangled until fully healed. Upon being healed, the sufferer survivors a 16% action speed penalty until they are injured again. Action and repairing speed. Oh, that's, that's pretty decent. That's pretty decent. Um, I'd put that at like C. That's not bad. Um, Monster Shrine, Scourge Hook, Pain Res. Pain Res isn't on here. No Scourge Hooks are, okay. Um, and neither is Septic Touch. All right, Pain Res. Each time a survivor is hooked on a Scourge Hook, the following effects apply. The generator with the most progress explodes instantly, losing 15% of its progress. Wow, that's huge. And starting to regress. Survivors are paying that generator will scream but not reveal their location. This could be crazy because you got a generator that's at 99 you hook someone, it explodes for 15, you immediately go over there and they tap it and start working on it immediately and then you hit it with pop, that's like what, 35% right there gone. So that takes it from 99 to like 65 or whatever. I would put that at a as an S tier. You run that with agitation and floods of rage, that'd be pretty crazy. Um, septic Touch, whenever a survivor performs a healing action. Oh, Septic Touch is a teachable the dredge perk. <laughs> whenever a dredge... Oh, <laughs> I'm getting tired from all this talking, man. Whenever a survivor performs a healing action while they're inside your terror radius, the survivor suffers from the blindness and exhausted status effects. These effects linger for 10 seconds after healing. Inside your terror radius? <laughs> I put that as an F. Shadowborn increases your field of view by 15 degrees. I'd, I'd put that at F. Oh, I can't put that at F. It's actually in here. Spirit Fury, the next teachable perk, is a teachable spirit perk. Every time you each pallet you break magnifies the wrath of the inner entity. After breaking two pallets, the next time you're stunned, the entity will instantly break it. You still suffer from the stun penalty. Um, that could be huge if you combine it with that um, fired up or brutal strength. Um, wait. I put brutal... I just realized I put brutal strength at F because fired up is a thing but i guess fired up brutal strength is off the jump and fired up is at the end game so it gets it gets you can break pallets at the same speed after the fifth generator is completed so i take that back i'll put brutal strength that i still i'll still put it at e because it's eh but you know so you combine this with um, enduring, spirit fury, and enduring. Pallets would be pretty much a joke, um, but I'll put it at C because I think it, overall it's kind of eh. Starstruck. This is one of my favorite perks. I'm incredibly biased towards this perk. This has got me out of so many bad situations with survivors wanting to body block me and stop me from hooking people. Like I've downed whole teams because they just. I don't know what they what they're thinking, but I'm just like one shot, one shot, one shot, and then I get the hook and stuff like that. And combining this with agitation or mad grit, even though I think mad grit's an awful perk, but just combining them and it's absolutely devastating. So it's a teachable trickster perk. Survivors ex survivors suffer from the exposed status effect while in your terror radius. The effect lingers for 30 seconds after leaving your terror radius. After hooking a, or dropping the carried survivor, starstruck deactivates. The status effect persists for another 30 seconds for any survivor inside your terror radius at that moment. Starstruck has a cooldown of 60 seconds. 
once the survivor is no longer being carried. So, Starstruck, of course, it's not in here. I would put at an A. I put at a B. <sighs> even though, even though I like Starstruck so much, I'll put it at a B because it's it's pretty niche, you know. If you're I always get paired with super altruistic survivors who are always constantly body blocking. So this this is almost like a must run for me. But other than that, yeah, I don't even know. I don't. I feel like not a lot of people run this, so I'll put it at a B. Um, Strider, a teachable nurse perk, increases the grunts of pain of survivors by fifty percent. Increases the volume of their breathing by twenty five percent. I'd say. F. Um, superior Anatomy, a teachable mastermind perk. Obviously not on the list. Um, oh, wait, right here. Strider. F. Um, you vault 40% faster if somebody does a rush vault within 8 meters of you. That's pretty nice. I'd put that at, like, C. This would be really good for the slower killers, I think, who struggle to get through to catch up, especially through windows. Where is what is that perk? Is that Jolt? Or is that Eruption? We'll just skip that one for now. Surveillance, the auras of regressing generators. Oh, surveillance is the teachable the pig perk. The auras of regressing generators are highlighted in white. If the regression progress is interrupted, its aura will be highlighted yellow for 16 seconds. Surveillance increases the audible range of survivors generator repairing by eight meters. The noises. I mean, that's pretty solid. That's a pretty solid information perk. I'll put it at, like, C. I mean, it's not crazy. Maybe B. Because you can see all of them. You combine that with, like, um, Pop Goes the Weasel and Overwhelming, maybe. Um, Terminus. Do I really want to put that at C or B? I'll drop it down to C. <laughs> Terminus. Basically, once the exit gates are powered, they're broken and can't heal for 30 seconds. Um, I'd put that at, like, B. Uh, uh, I, I'd put that at D. Because you could just do no ed, which would be way better. You don't have to worry about healing when you can one-shot. Um, territorial imperative. We'll go ahead and throw that right here at F. Uh, it's pretty awful. Um... The aura of a survivor entering the basement when you're at least 32 meters away is revealed to you for three seconds. It has a cooldown of 20 seconds. I don't know if anybody ever in the history of this game has ever used that perk. Thanatophobia. Um, each injured, dying, or hooked survivor afflicts survivors with a stackable 2% action speed penalty to repairing, sabotaging, cleansing up to a maximum of 8%. Increases the action speed penalty. Increases the action speed Increases the action speed penalty by further 12% if there are four survivors who are injured, dying, or hooked at the same time. So, I mean, 2, 4, 6, 8. So, realistically, you'd probably have two to three people injured at a time, so 6%. It's very rare to have four people injured at the same time unless it's like a legion, I think. So, you definitely need to run this on fast killers. I put it at oh, I'd put it at like uh, I'd put it at a solid B. Um, they could be S easily if you're really good at keeping people injured. Thrilling tremors. After after picking up a survivor, all generators not currently being repaired by survivors are blocked for the next 16 seconds. The auras of all generators are highlighted to you in white. Cool down to 60 seconds. I mean, that's, that's decent. It's not awful. I'd put it at, like, D. Tinkerer, a teachable hillbilly perk. Whenever a generator is repaired to 70%, you benefit from the following effects. Trigger a loud noise notification for that generator, revealing its location. Grants the undetectable status effect for the next 16 seconds. I think that's a pretty, pretty solid perk. I'd throw that up at A for sure. Um, Trail of Torment. Teachable Executioner perk. Your 
Uh, after damaging a gen, you become undetectable status effect. Yo, you're granted the undetectable status effect until that generator stops regressing or you damage a survivor by any means. Well, that's not too bad. Has a 60 second cooldown. Oh, and it makes the aura of the generator yellow. Eh. We'll go ahead and put that at D or E. D! A nerving presence. Survivors repairing or healing within your terror radius suffer from the following effects. Increases the trigger odds of a skill check by 10%. Decreases the success of skill checks by 60%. But they have to be in your terror radius, which isn't great. You need like a thousand meter terror radius for this to be really good. Ah, put it at like E. Whispers, and then finally, Zenshin Tactics. Unlocks um, the auras of breakable walls, pallets, and windows are revealed to you for 32 meters. Eh. I gotta put that at F. That's. that's that's not really great. That's pretty bad. What's this last one? Um, it's got a. It looks like Joel. Let me see. Joel. Yeah. How did I miss that? A teachable legion perk? Oh no, it's all an all perk. Okay. Joel and Fearmonger are left. Those aren't teachable perks. Uh, teachable. Those are just general perks. But yeah, that's my, uh, man, that took forever, bro. That's my teachable killer perk tier list. Um, some of the best, let's see who's got some of the best perks real quick. Legion, he's got an S tier perk. Hag's got an S tier perk. Doctor's got an S tier perk, and Clown's got an S tier perk. Um, Hag's got an A tier. Plague's got an A tier. Ghosty's got an A tier. Uh, Spirit's got an A tier. Hillbilly's got an A tier. And then, I don't even know, Undying? Who's Undying? Blight, I think. He's got an A tier. And obviously, we're missing some stuff like um, Call of Brian and stuff. Like I'll edit that in in post, but I can't think of where they're at now. Call of Brian's definitely S tier. Floods of Rage is S tier. But we are missing a couple. But that does it for this one. This was all the teachable killer perk uh tier list at least all the ones they had on this trash tier list that was made i don't know who made this thing they need to be fired but that does it for this one thanks for watching let me know um if you agree or disagree with my list what perks you think should be higher or lower and yeah thanks for watching like comment subscribe do other good stuff and i'll see you guys in the next one